Okay, well, I've got a package in the mail. So, let's do an unboxing. Now, Stefan0719, this is an item that he had a long time ago. It's not the original one he had. This is one he got off eBay and sent to me. And to him, this is a very special item. Now, apparently, it's some kind of function generator and it's got radio functions or something like that, but... Anyway, we're going to take this open and have a look and see what's actually here. Right, okay, so... Box. Of course, I cannot get my scissors into the thing, so I'm going I just want to make sure this flap is out of the camera shot when I open the box up. Because, you know, I don't want to put my dress out publicly. So let's see what we've actually got in here. Okay, some packaging. There's something metal in here. So, let's take this out. I think that's everything. Just make sure. So let's see what we've got here. This is the unit here. And looks like an old radio, doesn't it? I mean, we've got a dial here and lots of knobs. Love stuff with lots of knobs on it. But what this is, from what he said, this is a signal generator which also has audio modulation. I'm not sure what all these knobs do. I mean, obviously, this is for the frequency. Oh, look at that. It's even got flywheel on it. Nice flywheel operation there as well. This is for the frequency range, obviously. It's indicated by the eight scales on the dial there. Don't know what this does. Okay, it just calibrates the scale. There's the various functions on this knob here. At least I think. Don't know what this does. I guess this is for the audio modulation, however loud you want to have it. And audio frequency, maybe? Well, I guess the next thing to do is power this up and have a little play around with it and see what it does. Now, I was wondering just how do you power this thing up? Because, you know, it's, well, we got an RF port here and an AF port here, but... Where do you plug it in? Well, on the back, there's a little cover that I've removed. And in there, a 9 volt battery clip. Also a thing where you can plug in a charger. So this connector is a little bit crusty. I don't even know if it's going to make contact, but I'm going to plug that in. The wires on here. Um, I think one of the first things I'm going to do is replace the wires on here because that's kind of coming out there, so... So, let's turn this on and see if it works. No, I'm not Dave Jones. Let's turn this on and see if it works. I've got this hooked up to my scope. I've got a battery in there. Let's see if we get anything. Okay. Let me just turn up the amplitude on the scope here. So, this should be the frequency adjust. Okay, that seems to be... That's doing its thing. So, what does this do? Okay, I guess that's the amplitude. Looks like we've got a bit of a scratchy pot here. So, this should adjust the frequency range. Yep, we're down a little bit, so I'll just adjust that. So frequency range. Anyway. I've got my meter connected up to my scope's Y out because I want to see how accurate the frequency is you know what we've got on the scale here see if that matches what the meter says got this all working now the meter says it's 460 kilohertz and I've got this all the way at the end and I'm on the first range so I'm going to turn that down to where it says 450 let's see how accurate that is okay let's see if we can calibrate that scale a bit All 
All right, let's uh, let's go down to 200 kilohertz. Yep, that pretty much agrees with it. Um, let's put it on to scale two. I'm getting 598 kilohertz on the meter, and on scale two, uh, I need to go over just a little bit. Yeah, so it's still pretty accurate. All right, let's turn this up. Let's go to 1.3 megahertz. Let's see if that still is at 1.3. Yep. Waveform looks a little bit weird, but I think that might be my battery because um, I don't know how good that battery is. Plus, there's probably a few little bits and pieces in here that need sorting out. So, uh, let's see what happens if I put this on to mod. Okay, doesn't seem to do anything. Perhaps if I turn this dial, something will happen. Oh, yep, the waveform's become fuzzy, so it's obviously doing something in there. Let me, uh, we may have an audio frequency modulating this now. Let's have a look. Let's turn that down. Yep, we definitely got something, although yeah, the camera's not picking it up very good. Maybe if I turn the lights down. I'll just see if I can uh, right, imagine this adjusts the frequency. Yep, we have modulation here. Although then we got another scratchy pot. This bit of the scope cam is not seeing it very good. Alright, let's put, see what this happens if we put this onto AF. Okay, we've got a tiny little waveform there. Oh no. Maybe that's so we can see what the audio frequency is? I don't know. I'd imagine that's what it is anyway. It's kind of shifting about a bit. Yeah, I think this thing is going to have to have a little bit of a service. What does Cal do? Calibrate, I suppose? Calibrate, I reckon? Something maybe like that? And what does this one do? Okay, I don't know what that does. At least I don't know what that does at the moment. Now, another little test I'm going to do is whether anything comes out of this AF jack when I have it on AF. I don't know if it will or not, but... I'm going to have a look. This is probably not the best way to connect it up. Just to see if there's anything there. I don't see anything. Just adjust this. It might be doing something. I'm not actually sure if that's really doing anything or not, to be honest. might be an input. That's what I suspected it was anyway. I'm going to take the front off this because I need to give it a little service, you know, clean up the potentiometers, maybe replace a few capacitors that need it. Still not quite sure what this is for. Now, I'd assume that you could connect an audio source up to this and it would modulate the RF, but no matter where I put this dial, that doesn't seem to do anything. So, there might be something wrong inside or I might be doing something wrong Probably the latter, to tell you the truth, but let's pop the cover off and see what lies underneath. Now, uh, have we got... Okay, we can get the cover off this. Uh, let's just see, because I'm really curious as to what's inside this, and I know I'm going to need to clean up those potentiometers anyway, so... If I could just get this open. Alrighty then, well it took a bit of grunting and puffing and panting and stuff like this, but got the cover up so we can look at all of the magic strawberry goodness inside this thing. So I guess this is the main frequency selector because it's got loads and loads of coils around it. Is that what that's connected to? Oh yeah, that's the ring switch. So anyway, what I want to do, I just want to spray some contact cleaner in each of these potentiometers. Hopefully that will get rid of all the scratchiness. And also, see if there is anything wrong with that AF jack. Because I'm sure it's supposed to do something. I mean, that wouldn't put it in there if it doesn't do anything. So, let's look, see where the AF jack is. 
there's our tuning right there as you can see I turn this it turns the tuning capacitor guess this potentiometer here is to calibrate the thing let's just see if I can find it Maybe there's a broken circuit trace or something where the AF jack is, and oh! Oh! Oh, I think I've found why the AF jack doesn't seem to be working. It's a good thing I did take the back off this, or the front off this. Look at that! Someone's just clipped that wire clean off, so that's going to have to be reattached. So, I'll just go and do those things right now, and I'll be back. Okay, one service later, and things are working a lot better now. So I've replaced the battery clip. If I could just get that into the camera. So I've got a nice good connection that's not going to short out anytime soon. Okay, there we are, we've got a nice sine wave. And just like before, I can select, um, go up and down in frequency. And all the knobs seem to work nice and good now. So we've got nice, clean up and down in amplitude with this knob here. I'll put this into the modulation mode. I'll turn the time base down. And let's see if we can get the scope to trigger on this so you can see this. So there we go, there's the modulated waveform. I can go up and down in frequency now. So I'm turning the frequency up. Now I'm turning the frequency down. This is the audio frequency I'm turning up and down, by the way. So you can see that's working. And also, the amount of modulation is working, as you can see. It's working nice and good. And yes, even this does something now. So I'm just going to plug that into there. I'm going to put this back together. As you can see, we're getting a waveform there, and that's the modulation waveform or well, the audio waveform is doing the modulation so that's all working a lot better now uh, here we are all back together and it's now working a lot better than when I got it so we got a Modulation. Well, we've got an RF. I'll go all the way up to two, um, 220 megahertz, but of course my scope doesn't, so I have to leave it on three, two, or one for the most part. Let's just turn that down a little. Hopefully, when I get a battery that's got a lot more charge in it, we'll get a better waveform than what we got there. Seems to be alright on the megahertz scale though, so maybe it's just the nature of the beast. And of course, yes, now the AF jack is doing stuff. I can put the modulation in. I've got this set to about 1 kilohertz at the moment. Go, there's our modulated waveform. Now if I move this over to the AF jack, you can see what's coming out of there. So put this onto AF, I know it was already given some output, but of course as I adjust this, I can adjust the audio frequency that goes from about 0.8 kilohertz to about 1.3. And this even adjusts what's coming out the AF. Just to calibrate it. If you need to calibrate it. So there's the calibrate function, so no modulation or anything like that. And this function here, I really don't know what that does. At first I thought this was an audio input when it's like this, but I've tried connecting an audio input to there and it doesn't seem to do anything. 
Of course, it could be a Morse key where you connect a Morse key, but that doesn't seem to do anything. I mean, if I short this out, just simulating a Morse key, connect it there, it doesn't seem to do anything, so I'm not really sure what that's for. So, there we go. There is the signal generator. I've even put the feedback on it, because they were just sort of rattling around inside the case. I don't know why, but, uh... Yep. And until next time, goodbye. Oh, and thanks goes out to Stefano719 for getting this and sending it to me.